as we all know, legally and ethically, we have obligations to make disclosure of material defects. Uh, but there's always a lot of confusion around material defects, latent defects, those things that you can't see, what kind of liability falls inside of there, and then trying to figure out how we have to handle uh, stigmatizing defects, like if there was been a death or a murder or something like that under property and how we handle those or, or more so how we're not supposed to handle those to avoid liability across those sides. And I know we all have known for years that we have this obligation to make sure that as a listing broker, if I have knowledge, I pass it on to the buyer broker. It should go on the form 17 for our sellers, but we all know that sellers tend to not be that great on disclosing things on the form 17. And right now there's going to be a lot of shifts in how that liability plays out because we've had so many offers where sellers have accepted offers with no inspection provisions for buyers, whether it was on the 35P or going through with the 35R, which is actually raising liability on us as brokers because a lot of that liability then for disclosure falls back on us because we carry the E&O. And we know that really the only way for them to go after a seller would be for a, a larger lawsuit. So we always carry a burden of responsibility when it comes to making disclosure of material defects and even more so with latent defects. One of the areas that I know that we have a, we've seen a lot of changes on in the last couple of years is around inspections. And we've seen them go from, I want to have the inspection. If you give the inspection now, you know, we're in breach of contract. And so there's always a lot of confusion because that's such a changing industry and how that stuff plays out. And for us as brokers, how we involve ourselves with the inspection process, if there's even an inspection process, what are the liabilities if we don't have an inspection before, between the buyer and the seller? And if we do get it as a listing broker, if I have the information or as a buyer broker, what do we do with it? And are we really stepping over some, some ethical lines on overreaching or, or getting out of our lane when we start reviewing inspections with our buyers and or our sellers when we're really not qualified to do some of that? So, you know, that's been a part of the trickiness with this is we've always done things because it's the way we've always done it, but we've never really been given really clear guidance or forms on how do I disclose? What do I disclose? What do I do to make sure that I'm getting the information the right way? And we don't have a lot of that set up for us. And in place, we've never really had a lot of that training, as well as the fact that a lot of us for years were trained to be the ones to review the inspections with our people and to walk through there. But we're starting to see a lot more liability come down when we when we step beyond our scope of expertise. And so what we're gonna do is really walk through each of those steps, making sure that broker to broker disclosure, seller to buyer disclosure, and just what we're doing and then how we handle that process in going through the, 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 the inspections, for us is reducing our liability. And really the best way to do that is to make sure that the clients are getting everything that they can possibly have so that they're getting informed decisions when they move forward in the process. And then, you know, really through that, I think we're all gonna be in a better position moving forward legally and ethically.